Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new, my name is Jenny. I'm here today to share with you my April TBR. Um, so I'm carrying over one book from March, and that is Forgotten Women, the Artists by Zing Sheng. And uh, yeah, this is a profile of, of Forgotten Women artists, and they're all illustrated really lovely by um, a whole bunch of women illustrators and um it's kind of it's it's an interesting overview um divided up into different sections based on um the medium that the artist was working in so i am reading for the book two prize this for april and may if you're not familiar with the book two prize i'm going to link the channel down below but basically i am reading in the nonfiction category and i will have six books to complete between April and May, by the end of May. And um, I, <laughs> it's very interesting actually. Normally the books that I get in my categories are quite easy to get at my library, uh, but it seems that a lot of the books uh, are more popular on my list that I have. I am group, Let's see, I can't remember, I'll put the number here. <laughs> Um, so I've got them on hold. I'm waiting to see what's coming in first. Um, I know for sure that in April, I'm going to be reading Master Slave Husband Wife by Ilan Wu. Um, this is a, obviously a slave narrative. Um, and I don't know that much else about it, to be honest. And I'm kind of glad about that. I don't want to know too much before I go in. And I also have Crossings, How Road Ecology is Shaping the Future of Our Planet by Ben Goldfarb and Built from the Fire by Victor Luckerson on hold. And hopefully those ones will come in because no one else is waiting for them. The other books in my group, however, people are waiting for um, ahead of me at the library. And then the other book that I will most likely listen to, because it's the only one out of all of them that is available, well, there's another one available on audio, but it is a huge list ahead of me of people waiting for it, is What an Owl Knows by Jennifer Ackerman. And I'm currently listening to The Fire Court by Andrew Taylor, which is book two in um, the uh, Fire of London uh, mystery series by Andrew Taylor, which I listened to the first one, um, The Ashes of London, I think it was called last year, I think. And I really enjoy these. Um, they are, I think, really well done for mysteries. I'm not a huge connoisseur of the genre, but what I like about them, I like the historical aspects. So it's obviously set in the 1600s after London, most of London burned in a huge fire. It is um, following James Mar Marwood, Mar Marwood, who um, is our main guy. He's not like a super high up person. He's kind of a lower down and his father was um, involved in some like political leanings that made him kind of an outcast. And so James Marwood kind of carries that with him. I really liked his, I like his relationship with his father who is kind of senile and, and that kind of relationship where he's taking care of his father. And then there's also a woman named Kat who um, had to leave her kind of aristocratic family for different reasons and is living kind of in hiding and, and living another life. And so they're, they interact in these mysteries when they're solving them. And so it's quite entertaining. So I'm, I'm enjoying them. So once I'm finished the fire court, which is the name of the second one, I will start listening to what an owl knows by Jennifer Ackerman. So that is most likely going to be my book two prize reading for April. Um, I make individual vlogs or vlogs that contain two to three books um, about all my reading for book two prize, but I'm not allowed to wrap them up in my general wrap ups. So if any of those books are interesting to you and you want to hear about them, you'll have to look for my separate um, vlogs about those which come out once the results of round two are announced at the end of May. Okay, so that is my 
uh, book two prize reading. I'm also reading The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman with my son Elliot, and this is actually a reread for me. I've read this, the, um, his dark materials before, but I thought that Elliot would enjoy them. They are great adventure stories, so we are rereading them. And it's nice to reread The Golden Compass because it's the one that I read the, probably read it at least 15 years ago, and um, I don't remember it very well at all. So it's nice to revisit it and it'll be nice to revisit the other two eventually as well with Elliot when we get to them, which may not be this year, but who knows, who knows. Um, okay, so I have another nonfiction to tell you about. Um, and that is Hilma Ofklint, A Biography by Julia Voss. And this is translated from the German I believe, by Anne Poston. Poston. Um, and so this is the Thrive Together Network book club read for April. Um, and we are having our discussion on this on April 19th. So um, I will try to read this one pretty quickly. This is, I just picked this book up today. It's absolutely stunning. It was very expensive. <laughs> um, you know, for, I mean, obviously it's a hard cover. It was uh, $45 Canadian. So, I mean, normally I would not buy um, a book, uh, a hard cover at that price. But uh, the thing is that I love Hilma Ofklint's work. Love it. And so I figured it'll have beautiful pictures of her work and I'll want to keep it. So I should just buy it. And this piece is my favorite of hers. It's called The Swans, number one. And I actually made an artwork as an ode to this with crows facing each other instead of swans. So I, you know, I took the plunge and indulged my desire to own this beautifully, beautifully made book. It's really, really lovely. Um, so yeah, that's my, that'll be my biography for the year. <laughs> Uh, and then I have two fiction books uh, that I will be reading this month. One of them is Ridge Runner by Gil Ad Adamson. Um, this is a sequel to her first novel, which was called The Outlander. So I read The Outlander when I heard about Ridge Runner. So Ridge Runner was nominated for the Giller Prize long list. I don't, I can't even tell you when. Let me, let me check when this was published. It was a couple years ago. This was published in 2020. So I think it was nominated for the Geller Prize that year or the following year in 2021. And um, that's when I heard about this book and then heard that it was a sequel to The Outlander. So I read The Outlander and then I found this you know, amazing hardcover copy of this book um, on discount at a bookstore in the summer. And, um, and I'm now reading it. So this is set in 1917, starts off in Alberta, in the Banff area, and we're following William Moreland. And William is, has been a hermit, he has been many, many things. He's a, a loner. He, tr he lives in the wilderness. He's on his own. In The Outlander, he meets Mary and they fall in love. And so The Outlander is more about Mary's story. And then she encounters William. And then at the end of The Outlander, they are together. And, um, and then this picks up with some time has passed in between. They have a son and um, William sets out on a journey to um, acquire funds for his son because he wants his son who's 12 to have uh, an easier life and so he sets out to make that happen for him and he goes down into Montana and um, acquires money. So it's very well written. I really like Gillian Adamson's writing style. Um, and I'm really excited to find out what happens in this story. 
And then the last novel I'll be reading for April is Hideous Kinky by Esther Freud. So this is a uh, the, the 1001 book club read-along book for Britta Bowler's uh, 1001 uh, book club for April. And I purchased this not knowing about the book club, a selection, I think sometime last year. And um, so I'm really excited to finally get to this. So this was made into a movie that starred Kate Winslet in the early 2000s. She did it, this was the first film sh that Kate Winslet filmed after she filmed Titanic. And this is one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, it follows Kate Winslet's character who is living in Morocco in the, yes, who was living in Morocco in the um, late 1960s. She's a hippie lady and she has these two young daughters who are there with her. Um, and she is estranged from her husband who is back in England. And um, it follows her her obsession with Sufism and spirituality, her basically looking for herself and the people they meet and encounter along the way in Morocco. And it also follows this these two beautiful sisters, her daughters, and um, their experience of living this very bohemian bohemian life um, when one of them is just wanting to go to school and be normal. And um, yeah, so it's it's a lovely, charming story. I'm very excited to read, this, read the source material for the film. And um, I believe that Esther Freud um, actually based this on her own life. Like, I think she actually had this experience or something similar to this when she was a child. So she kind of based uh, the novel on that. So very excited to read along. And I will also put this, the, the Thousand One Books Club is also hosted by someone else on BookTube. And I will link both of them down below if you'd like to join in. Okay, so that is my reading for April. Um, I, my reading for 2024 is definitely going better than I was, than my reading did in 2023. Uh, that's, there's lots, there's several reasons for that. I just have more time. Um, but I am very heavy on the nonfiction this year. So it's kind of interesting. I'm curious to see if my nonfiction stats increase to be almost on par with my fiction this year. Um, just happens that I'm doing a lot of reading for research that I'm interested in doing. And then for the BookTube Prize, I almost always read nonfiction, even though I put myself uh, as a judge, you can choose fiction, nonfiction, or both. And I always put myself in both. Um, but I don't think I've been selected to read fiction for several years because there's always a few less nonfiction judges. And so I always get put into nonfiction, but that's fine. I'm going to be learning about some interesting things that I don't know about. And um, that is the beauty of nonfiction. I think uh, one of these books built from the fire, I think is over 600 pages. So I'm a little nervous about that one. Hopefully it reads really smoothly and uh, I don't feel bogged down by such a big, large book, but it'll be good to get it done first, to get it done in the first month and not have to worry about it as much in the second month. So yeah, keep a lookout for those vlogs, which will uh, be coming at the end of May. I'm also making a vlog. This book will be part of a vlog um, that I've been making for a very long time. The longest vlog I've ever made in my life <laughs> um, in terms of span of time. Um, so when I'm done that one, that vlog will be published. And um, yeah, I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.